Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the January 2009 at Excel C3 paper. And this is like one of those old papers and um, from the legacy qualifications. This question relates to P3 and it relates to the topic of graphs and functions. And especially part C, something is uh, something I really want to make sure that I go through because I feel that there have been one or two questions similar to this and a lot of students don't know how to deal with this topic of finding the range of composite functions. So I'm going to get to that. So first of all, um, it says part A, it says the functions f and g are defined as or defined by f is such that x maps to 3x plus Linux. So this notation here is the same as saying it's the same as saying fx equals 3x plus an x. It's just another way of writing the same thing. And this would be g of x equals um, e to the power of x squared. Right? So they're the same kind of thing. But it's just written in a slightly different format. That's all. Now, it says write down the range of g. So there's no calculation involved. It's just one mark. But it's a question where I feel a lot of students will make mistakes if they don't think about what the graph of this function looks like and writing down the range of a function is always kind of like related to how the function looks now my guess is most students would think of it as something like this and um, something similar to e to the power of x this is y equals e to the power of x right now that goes through zero one and this is how that looks now, some people might think that this is going to be very similar, except maybe a bit steeper. Now, on this side, they would be correct to say it's steeper. Okay, because when x is 0, y is 0, so it's going to go through here. When x is 1, y is 1 on both of them. You put egg, there'll be e to the power, no, so y is e to the power of 1, sorry. When x is 1, you have e to the power of 1, and here you'll have e to the power of 1. So they both go through the same point, which is e to the power of 1, e. But when y is 2, this will be e squared, and this will be e to the power of 4. So when y is 2, this is going to be higher than that one. And, and when, y is, when x is 3, this is going to be e to the power of 3, this is going to be e to the power of 9. So on this side, until 1, they're kind of the same value. Then it's, this, this, this is going to increase quite rapidly. So this will be e to the power of x squared. Now, even if you drew it, you know, in the, like this, no problem, because you're, you know, we're actually, we're not even drawing it. Okay, but if you were asked to sketch it, you'd sketch it like this, no problem. Even if it looked like that, there'd be no problem, because as long as you're not sketching on the same graph of this. But the important thing now to realize is what happens on the negative side. What happens when x is negative 1? When this is negative 1, y becomes 1 over e, which is something which is small, like less than 1, down here. But when, the, when x becomes negative 1 and you put it into here, the output is going to have, as we know, x squared is always greater than or equal to 1. Uh, sorry, 0. So when you put x equals negative 1 in here, you'll have e to the power of 1. So it's going to go back up to this level. It's going to go back up again. And when, when you put e, x equals negative 2, you have e to the power of 4, the same, the same value there when you, when you have x equals 2. So it's going to be kind of like a quadratic in the way that it goes back up again like this. Okay, so it's like this will be a mirror image of that side. It's not really drawn very well, but it's going to be like this. So we can see that the range of this function here, okay, the range of this function here of g of x is going to be y is greater than or equal to 1. Because it reaches 1 and it goes above 1. The range are the values you can take on the y. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, we can write g of x if you want, it's greater than or equal to 1, as you wish. Both of them are fine. All right, so that's the important thing here for us to realize. Many people would have put um, y is greater than or equal to 0, thinking that it's going to be like y equals e to the power of x, but it's not. This side will be completely different from this side, okay, because it's squared. So the negative values will go back to what they were as positive values. All right, so there's part A. That's important for us to understand. Now, part B says, show that the composite function fg of x is defined by this expression here. So basically, what does fg of x mean? It means we take the function g of x and put it inside the function f. Okay, so g of x is e to the power of x squared. So we're going to take e to the power of x squared, and wherever we see x in the function f, we're going to replace the x with this. 
So that's going to be 3 times e to the power of x squared plus lin of e to the power of x squared. Now, this doesn't look quite the same as that. The reason being this section here. All right. Now, what we should understand is that lin of e to the power of x squared, this means log to the base e of e to the power of x squared. And if we use the power law, if we use the power law, this will be x squared times log to the base e of e. And log to the base of something of itself is 1, so that becomes x squared. So this part becomes x squared. So this is 3 e to the power of x squared plus x squared. So therefore, we can say f g of x maps to x squared plus 3 e to the power of x squared. Okay, so there's the answer to part B. And now we're going to answer part C. It says write down the range of f g. So again, it's only one mark. And it says write down. But there's something that you have to understand here that's very important. Okay, this is the point that I'm, this is one of, one of the reasons why I wanted to answer this particular question because there's not that many questions asking us to find the range of these composite functions. And I feel that this is a type of question that might come up in the newer papers. So how do you find the range of a composite function? Well, what we do is we think about um, f g of x means you start with g. You start with g of x and you put that into the function f. Okay, now, what can go into g? Well, all real numbers can go into g. Okay, that's like the domain. Anything can go into g. Right, that can take anything. What can come out of g? Well, what can come out of g is only values g of x is greater than or equal to 1, as we mentioned before. Okay, g of x can, the output of g of x will always be greater than or equal to 1. It will never be less than that. So that means in the composite function, what can go into the function f is only values of x which are greater than or equal to 1. So what can go into here, okay, which is 3x plus lin x, the lowest value that can go into here is x equals 1. So when we find what x equals 1 is, when you put it into here, you have 3 times 1 plus the lin of 1. Now the lin of 1 is 0, and 3 times 1 is 3, so f1 equals 3. So that means, you know, if you put higher values of x in, like 2 or 3 or 4, you're going to get bigger values in this, right? So that's always going to be positive, and that's going to keep increasing. So basically, we can say that the range, the range of fg is greater than or equal to 3. Okay, it can start from 3 and go more than 3. So that's the range of fg. Okay, so we have to think about what is able to go into the function f from function g. The input of function f in the composite function fg is anything that's equal to 1 or greater than 1. So the lowest value that the, the composite function fg of x can have is the value you, put, you get when you put 1 into here, okay, which is 3. It can go higher than that, but that's the lowest. It can't go lower than that. Okay, so there's the answer to part c. Um, so that's how you deal with these composite function ranges. You think about what the output of what the inside function is going to be or can be, and then you think about, you know, um, you know that's, that's basically the input of function f for the composite function. You think, okay, what the input for this is only greater than or equal to 1. So then you have to think about what the output of this can be if that is the input. If that is the input, then the output can only be 3 and above. Okay, so there's part C done of this question. It's only worth one mark, but it's a very important point that hopefully um, you understand now. Okay, now part D says, solve the equation dfgx equals x e times e x e to the power of x squared plus 2. So we've got fgx already here. Okay, they told us what it is anyway. It's x squared plus 3e x squared. Okay, so x squared plus 3e to the power of x squared. Okay, and we want to find, we, we need to first differentiate this. So this is what y is. So let's differentiate this first. So we're going to find dy dx. So we have to differentiate this first and then equate it to that. So this is going to give us 2x plus, now how do you differentiate something like this? Well, first of all, it stays as it is. So it's 3e to the power of x squared. 
okay that stays as it is but then you use the chain rule you multiply by the difference of what's inside the function which is 2x okay so we can say dy dx is equal to 2x plus and that's going to be 6x e to the power of x squared and we've got to solve the equation where you equate this to that value over there Okay, so now we're going to equate these to each other. So 2x plus 6 times x e to the power of x squared is equal to x times x e to the power of x squared, and that's plus 2. Now we can solve this equation. Let's bring everything on. Well, let's expand this bracket first. We have 2x plus 6x e to the power of x squared equals x squared e to the power of x squared plus 2x. Okay, so bring the like terms together. Mm. Well, let's just, first of all, the 2x here is going to cancel out with the 2x. So we have here 6x e to the power of x squared minus x squared e to the power of x squared equals 0. That's going to help us. We can factorize this. Okay, if we factorize this, the common factor is x and e to the power of x squared. And here you have 6 minus x equals 0. Yeah, so we have either x e to the power of x squared equals 0 or 6 minus x equals 0. In this case, e to the power of x squared um, can never be 0. So, either, so that means x equals 0. We know that e to the power of x squared equals 0. There's no solution because the lowest this can go as 1 and x equals 6. So here we have the two solutions x equals 0 and x equals 6 and that concludes this question here uh, which is question number 5 from the Edexcel C3 January 2009 paper. Other questions from this particular paper if I get to answer them will be in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions from this topic of functions and graphs um, can be found in the playlist here. I'll also include differentiation um, playlist over here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.